OK, so we're going to move on now. We're going to be looking at a new type of number. This this number is called Euler's number. People often think this should be said Euler. But the way I remember this is I think about it like this word Euler, like the word oil that we have at the beginning. So it's Euler's number. And you see this written in lowercase e. So exponential functions of the form y equals sorry, f of x equals a to the power of x. They have a special property. The special property is that the graphs of their gradient functions, f dash x, are a similar shape to the graphs of the functions themselves. Let's just repeat that for a second. The graphs of their gradient functions have a really similar shape to the graphs of the functions themselves, which is kind of strange because we know that quadratics, when you differentiate a quadratic, the gradient function becomes a straight line. And when you differentiate a cubic, the gradient function becomes a quadratic, OK? So these are weird because when you differentiate an exponential, you get a graph that also is an exponential. So this means that the gradient function f dash of x is equal to k a x. It is just the same exponential function, but it has just been multiplied in front by some kind of constant. It is some kind of sketching. So we're going to investigate this. So here's an example. I've said this is f of x, which is 2 to the power of x. And I have sketched here its gradient function f dash x. And we can see that it's clearly been multiplied by something because it's not crossing at 1 anymore. It's been multiplied by 0 point, I don't know what that looks like, 0 0.75, something like that. But it's still roughly that same kind of exponential sort of shape. So I'm going to go back to Desmos and I'm going to open this up so that we can investigate what is happening here. So at the top, I have got in the red graph, I am going to make this bold so it's a little bit easier to see. The red graph here is the exponential graph and the green graph is the gradient function. At the moment, I've got that a is just equal to 1. And when a is equal to 1, you can see that the gradient is just 0 the whole way. So the gradient function is just 0 all the way across. Now, if I make a less than 1, you can see that the gradient function is negative, okay? It's a decreasing function, but we're not that interested in this side. I'm gonna be more interested in what happens when I increase a. So when I increase a, you can see that the gradient function is also sort of starting to kind of catch up with it, really. And as I keep making a get bigger, the gradient function at one point overlaps it, and then the gradient function overtakes it, okay? And we are interested in a particular point. I'm guessing, I'm hoping you can guess that the point we are most interested in is when does the gradient function perfectly overlap the original function? And it looks like it's roughly around here, about 2.7, 2.71, 2.72, something like that. OK, if I zoom in a bit, we might get a little bit of a, a better kind of view here. It looks about 2.7, it's close. 2.72, it's even closer. So let's see what that value is. Well, the number where the gradient function is exactly the same as the original function is where x is equal to e, which is 2.71828. And it is known as Euler's number. So let's just quickly re remind us what this looks like visually. When a is equal to, and I'm going to replace it with 2.718, just it's rounded to three decimal places there, the gradient function and the function are the same. In other words, e to the power of x differentiates to e to the power of x, Euler's number. And when we're using e, um, we're just using it as a stand-in for the number 2.71828. Before I move on here, I have highly recommended you to watch Number Files video on Euler's number. Just go on YouTube, search Number File and Euler's number. It will tell you about where this number comes from. It's not just some random number that I'm talking to you about now. It is incredible and it pops up everywhere. In fact, it is one of the five most fundamental constants in mathematics. And we list these as 0, 1, i, which is an imaginary number, e and pi. So it's worth watching this video. I highly, highly recommend taking the time out of your studies to watch this because it's a fascinating number that pops up in so many areas of maths. So the special property we're going to be using about Euler's number here is that if y equals e to the power of x, 
when you find its gradient function, when you differentiate it, it equals e to the power of x. It differentiates to itself. So although any function of the form y equals a to the power of x is known as an exponential function, e to the power of x is known as the exponential function. So when we talk about the exponential function, we're talking about e to the power of x, which is essentially saying 2.71828 dot 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 to the power of x. But we just simplify that as e to the power of x. We say it as Euler's number. And you can find the exponential function on your calculator above the ln key. So when it's asking for you to find the value of e to the power of 4, what's actually happening here is you're doing 2.71828 dot 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 to the power of 4. But we're just going to type this into our calculator and it's just above the ln button. So I'm going to press shift and then I'm going to press the ln button and it automatically puts the power in there. So I'm going to put as e to the power of 4, that's its exact form. And I get that the real value is 54.598 dot dot dot. That's the value of e to the power of 4. And you do need to make sure that you can find this on your calculators. So let's just kind of stick on this theme. We're going to think about how we can differentiate these kinds of functions. So we're going to try and differentiate y equals a e to the power of kx. So sort of variations on the exponential function. The first thing I've got here is if y is equal to e to the power of kx, where k is some kind of constant, then to differentiate it, you multiply by the coefficient of the power and keep the function the same. So it's a bit of a variation of what we said here, e to the x differentiates to e to the x. If there is a number in front of it, you multiply by that number and then keep the function the same. And what I've written here, this is not a standalone rule, but it's an application of something called the chain rule, which you will encounter in year two, and you will then be able to understand why this is true. But for now in year one, you just need to trust me that this is how it works. So the first question says, differentiate e to the power of 5x with respect to x. So I'm going to differentiate with respect to x. Hopefully you're familiar with this notation, e to the power of 5x. Well, using that rule, k here is 5. So it's just going to be 5 e to the power of 5x. Now for the next one, I haven't actually, I've written different here. This should say differentiate. I've written that wrong each time. Differentiate, not different, but differentiate each time, that should say. This time I want to differentiate e to the power of minus x with respect to x. So really, when I'm trying to differentiate this with respect to x, this is actually e to the power of minus 1x. So when I differentiate that with respect to x, I will multiply by minus 1 at the beginning, and I will have e to the power of minus 1x. But we never really write it like that, do we? We would just write minus e to the minus x. OK. And this last one, I'm going to do slightly different notation. here. I'm going to say if y equals 4e to the 3x, we're now going to differentiate this instead. So this 4 that's hanging out outside the front, it's just going to kind of stay there when I do the differentiation. So when I differentiate to get dy by dx, let's just leave the 4 there for a second. And we're going to multiply by the derivative of e to the 3x. And that's just going to be 3e to the 3x. So it's just going to be 12e to the 3x. And that's because it's of this form here. So you just keep the a and multiply. So this note says that in general, when you scale the function, so I've got it here as 4, you scale the derivative or the integral. So usually it would have been 3e to the 3x, but I've changed it to 12 because it was scaled by 4. So we are going to do some, um, some transformations of graphs in the next bit. But that's just a little bit about how we do some differentiation and Euler's number.